there's nothing more important for a college coach uh, than actually being able to see the athlete. The coach's reference is very important. A college coach, you know, is going to want to know that you're a coachable and reliable athlete. When setting up a profile, it's not the time to be humble. It's actually the time to, to express yourself and show everything that you've that you've achieved. Welcome to the NSR Australia podcast. My name is Jacob Richards, former NSR student athlete. Okay, welcome to this week's podcast. Um, thank you very much for the, the feedback on last week's episode. We've had a lot of great questions come in and a few ideas on some topics uh, to cover in the coming weeks. If you did miss last week's episode on junior and community colleges, you can listen uh, to it on our YouTube channel or podcast section on our website. Uh, our podcast is also available on iTunes, so make sure you all subscribe um, so you don't miss an episode. Now, in this week's episode, uh, we're going to be covering a very important topic and a, a very important part of the recruiting process, uh, the athlete profile. As we're trying to find opportunities you know, from the other side of the world, it's, it's imperative that, that an athlete's website or profile stands out to, to college coaches to gain their attention. In to speak about uh, this topic, we have the CEO of NSR Australia New Zealand, Marco Mezzano. Uh, Marco has been promoting athletes to American colleges for, for 11 years now, so he knows exactly what coaches are looking for when it comes to, to recruiting international athletes. Marco, thank you uh, for taking some time out of your busy schedule and, and jumping on this week's podcast. Jacob, thank you for having me. I'm delighted to, to be here today on the, on the podcast. and. The, the podcast, as you know, and, and, and all of our listeners out there, it, it's a new thing that we've implemented over the last couple of weeks uh, that put in place to educate not only NSR athletes and NSR parents, but also anybody out there who's, who's wanting to learn about the, the college pathway and the college recruitment process. Because as we all know, it, it can be quite a, a daunting one if you don't know sort of where to start. So the, uh, the podcasts have been, uh, have been met with incredible uh, feedback so far, so we're absolutely delighted to... To, to, to be here today, that's for sure. All right, so we'll get straight into it. Uh, now, you've been promoting Australian and New Zealand athletes to, to college coaches for 11 years now, so I guess you're the, the best person to, to speak with in regards to athlete profiles. What's the most important piece of information on an athlete's profile? What, what is the one thing that coaches need to see? Footage. Footage by far, uh, Jacob. Like, there's, there's nothing more important for a college coach uh, than actually being able to see the athlete. One of the disadvantages that international students have got is that obviously a, an American coach can't actually watch them play live. And so they're relying on, on footage. And, and sometimes we, we get asked the question, well, how much footage should we send? How do we record the footage? Is a handheld camera the, the, right, type of, uh, the right type of camera to use? Well, I guess the, the simple sort of answer to, to that question is, the more footage, the better. The more a coach can actually evaluate an athlete, the easier it is for them to actually be able to make a decision on the athlete. I guess, Jacob, I know this is your podcast, but I've got a question for you. Like, Who would you rather recruit? A student who's got one set of footage, maybe one minute long, or a student who's been able to show a progression of footage over a 12, 18, 24, 36 month process? Well, obviously, I'd, I'd rather take an athlete with, with more footage, footage that they've gathered over a number of years so I can track their development and, and improvement. And, that, and that's exactly right. That's, that's the important part. We speak to coaches on a daily basis, and college coaches, obviously, they, they, they want to see references. They do want to see other bits and pieces, which, which we'll get into, but definitely by far a footage. And, you know, recording footage is important you don't need a professional camera crew that's not not what we're trying to say because obviously now cameras are, are, are in pretty good sort of condition the, the technology is amazing now so any sort of handheld camera from an elevated position is, is going to be important and and there's certain sports obviously that require different sets of footage and we provide sort of tips for, for every type of sport out there and some listeners if, if you you know if you're from a different sport and you'd like some tips but feel free to, to get in touch and we'll send them to you for sure but elevated position and avoid phones. Uh, there's not, nothing more um, that difficult 
to actually watch than than shaky footage that uh, that you use by by hand. So elevated position and as much footage as possible. Certain sports you can avoid uh, training as well. So training footage or indoor footage, playing with, with with your friends. If we're talking about soccer in this instance, try and avoid that as well because it's not a true reflection of of your ability. School soccer is another question, or school sport is another question that we get all the time. You know, is, is, is school sport footage good enough? I would say that it depends on the school and depends on the quality of, of the school sport as well. You know, there, there's some high high quality athletes who are playing school sport and the facilities are great and, and the, the, the competition is great. So that can work, but also coaches aren't silly. You know, they, they know if you're running rings around players that maybe the the com- competition that you're playing in isn't isn't of a high standard, so it can actually work against you uh, as well. Awesome. So hands down, footage is obviously the most important part. Use a video camera, not a phone. If you can, put it on a tripod as well to, to keep it steady. Get at an elevated level. Um, so so pretty simple stuff. There. Yep. And showing progression, showing progression through through the footage. Okay, so footage is obviously the most important part, as we just mentioned. What other sort of bits of information needs to be on an athlete's profile for a coach to see? Coaches' references, teachers' references, um, achievements, pictures, statistics, um, and, and and not in that particular order. But if we just sort of go through coaches' references, it's it gives a coach a, a realistic understanding of what a coach thinks of you, of your attitude. Um, you know, is he timely? Does he does he miss any training sessions? Um, is he a committed athlete? Things like that are going to be really important for a coach to read. Teachers, teachers references are key as well because obviously you are a student athlete. Emphasis on the word student uh, before athlete. So, is he a committed student? D- does he mess around in class or does he not mess around in class? Like things like that are going to play a vital part. So, getting teachers references is is, is key as well. Um, athletic achievements or, or a, a sporting resume. Again, that's that's a question that comes up all the time. Mums and dads ask us how how much info should we put on onto a uh, onto a resume. Well, I guess the, the the more the better. Obviously, they don't want to know if you were the man of the match in an under sevens game, um, <laughs> like like many games that, that, that I played in. Um, that wouldn't work wouldn't work in, in in favor. But I think up until you know from 13, 14 years old, it's important to show as much of your achievements as possible. And again, don't be shy. A profile is not the time, or setting up a, when, when setting up a profile, it's not the time to be humble. It's actually the time to, to express yourself and show everything that you've, that you've achieved. And in addition to that, obviously statistics. As we all know, uh, Americans love statistics, so it's, it's getting tested uh, regularly. Uh, official testing scores are, are key. Obviously our NSR athletes, who are involved in the NSR um, high performance program and the college combines, they get access to, to regular testing and, and the official test scores, which are gonna be really important, like yo-yo, to, uh, yo-yo test or beep test and sprint test, vertical jumps, things that actually show the type of athlete that you are. And that on a regular basis, you know, every six months is gonna be key. Um, our high performance manager here, uh, Michael Kivotti, he, he seems to, to constantly advise athletes to make sure that they put some effort in prior to each each test so prepare themselves so then their scores are reflective of their ability at that at that moment because the athletes obviously are teenagers what happens is your results are automatically going to improve based on natural growth and natural you know progression of your own age so being 14 to 15 you, you're going to improve i believe he says anywhere between three to five percent um, automatically yep. Now, if you put a bit of effort into that, then your test scores should be improving between five to ten percent every year after that. And so that's that's what a coach coach wants to see. And so statistics, you know, vertical jumps, like I mentioned, yo-yo tests, sprint tests, things like that. Now, obviously, certain sports don't need specific tests. They're going to want to know tournament scores. They're going to want to know competition scores. If that's track and field, or if it's a swimming meet, and they're going to want to know. The, the the type of swing that an athlete's got as well, um, maybe using a track man for, for the golfers, any sort of statistics that you can put together that is officially recorded that can highlight your progression and your ability is gonna is gonna be great. Awesome. So just to touch on those, uh, a coach's reference is very important. A college coach 
you know, he's going to want to know that you're a coachable and reliable athlete. A teacher's reference, as Marco mentioned, student always before athlete in, in college. You know, if you need to be reminded constantly to go to class or do your homework or finish your, uh, finish your assignments, you know, then they're not going to want to bring you on their program. Um, athletic and academic achievements need to be listed. Pictures are important as well. And also statistics is, is key, key information on an athlete profile. So, Marco, you mentioned before, and we've been speaking about it a little bit, footage needs to be updated regularly, uh, yearly, so a coach can, can obviously track your progression. How up-to-date does everything else need to be on, on your profile? That's a good question, Jacob. The, I guess the, the simple sort of answer is that college recruitment or profile information is not a set and forget. It's not, I'm going to set it up once, done my homework, wash my hands, and then just let it, let it go. Um, in fact, it's actually quite the opposite. You need to be regularly updating it. You need to be showing progression as often as possible. Now, on the athletes on the NSR program are required to send in information at very least once a year. Yep. Now, if it was up to me, I would request that obviously every single month, but we understand that families have got a lot of things going on uh, themselves. So we make it compulsory for, for at least once a year. Um, over the last 11 years, since we've been sending students to, to the US, co coaches constantly provide feedback to us and, and the one thing they constantly say is don't send me any information that is more than 12 months old because that that's not going to get the athlete recruited in fact it, like I mentioned it, it'll actually work against you uh, so as, a, as an agency here at, at NSR we make it compulsory to provide updated information once a year but athletes also get access to, to the NSR portal which allows them to enter at any point and, and update information so you know if they if they've grown you know, by all means, they can go in there and, and, and change their height. Um, if they've won a recent award, then by all means, they can go in there again and, and, and change it. So, again, the answer to your question is as often as often as possible. And I guess the question goes back to, to our listeners out there. Who would you rather recruit? Someone who's got new updated information that shows progression over a longer period of time or an athlete who set their information up 18 months ago and then just let it go expecting to be recruited? Yep. So basically, you need to be updating your profile the second something something new happens in your life, whether it be tournament results from a golf a tournament on the weekend or a, a, an unbelievable goal that you scored on the weekends. Um, it needs to be updated as quickly as possible. So you know, if a coach is on your your profile, he can see the the most up to date you know bits of information. You know, and, and knows exactly what's happening in, in your life at this point in time. Definitely, definitely. You, you, you need to be serious about getting recruited. And like I said, we, we make it compulsory. And I, I put a, a strong emphasis on making sure that there's constantly new updated information because it, it doesn't help us as an agency to be the, the, the type of agency that the, there are around in, in, in the US, especially where there's 2 million profiles on a website and nothing's been updated for, for 18 months, like that hurts us as a brand, it hurts the athletes, uh, and ultimately it's it's not gonna help anyone get recruited. Yep, so it's important to, to show progression and you need to remember, you're not only competing with other athletes you know, on the NSR program for a, for a spot in a college program, you're competing with kids from all over the world, you're competing with American high school student athletes as well. Um, you know, so I guess another question you need to ask yourself is why would a a college coach take take you on to their program when they can go down to their local high school or, or another school in their state um, and and bring an athlete on. So your your profile needs to be as up to date as possible. And that point there, Jacob, that point there about why would they recruit a foreign student over a local student? That question gets asked to me every day from mums and dads. And my simple answer yeah. is, well, they don't have to. Mm -hmm. that, that they genuinely don't have to. Yes, some in, some schools have got quotas that they might want to reach in terms of international quotas. Some schools like to have a bit of fire and flavour. But I guess when it boils down to it, they're trying to recruit the best student athlete for, for their program. And that, that might be another topic for another podcast that we yeah. can obviously go into. But th they're trying to recruit the best athlete, the best student for their, for their program. Yep, definitely. So internationals, uh, I guess, need to do as much as possible to to compete with with not only American high school students but but student athletes from from all over the world. So to sum this episode up uh, really quickly, college coaches need to see as much footage as possible. Uh, your information on your profile needs to be 
as up to date as possible um, to show obviously development and progression. They really want to see, as I said, as much information as possible so they can make an informed decision on whether or not they want to bring you onto their program. The more information you have as well obviously gives them or, or the college coach a better idea on, on what they can do with you if they bring you onto to their program. Um, but Marco, thank you very much for, for coming on to this week's episode. Um, Jacob, no, thank you very much for, for having me. Uh, the, um, the reason behind t- today's episode was actually because of the feedback that we received after episode number one, which was, which was about offers. We, we started the, the podcast uh, series with offers because obviously the, the, the timing of it with all of our students leaving for college this year. So we thought it was important to, to explain how the offers were generated and the feedback that we got was that it was fantastic understanding about offers, but how what do you do before you actually get an offer? So if we bring the whole recruitment process back, step number one is actual profile. Profile creation and understanding the importance of what goes into uh, contacting a college coach. So no point contacting a college coach until you have your profiles. Uh, so. Step number one, the whole recruitment process would would be this one for, for sure. And the podcast series from now on, obviously, is something that's happening weekly. We've got uh, another hundreds of hundreds of topics still available. Uh, I urge the listeners out there to please uh, do us a favor, provide some feedback, shoot us an email, comment on the post. Let us know if there's any sort of specific uh, topics that you guys would, would like to, to have covered, and, and, and we'll be sure to, to put that out there. Awesome. Marco, thank you for coming on. So hopefully everyone has has learned something in this week's episode. Um, An international athlete's website or profile is their main tool for for being recruited. So it needs to be, I guess, as perfect as possible. Um, That that concludes this week's podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you listen in next week as we cover another important topic. Um, We will be releasing our first episode of, of NSR TV very soon, which is very exciting. Um, As always, if you have any feedback about this week's episode, as Marco said, uh, feel free to contact us. Send me an email at jrichards at nsr-inc.com or comment on our YouTube video or Facebook posts. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Make sure you tune in next week.